more than happy to She looks up. really tired. Oh, shame. Yeah, let's get ready. Okay. <laughs> mm. Good evening. Welcome to CGTN at the Table. I'm Dean Young. This program is a sidebar program for the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation. And in this program, I invite CGTN reporters and editors to join me analyzing and assessing policy decisions made during the forum. This afternoon, ministers from China and African countries sit down together citing the tone for tomorrow's forum. And in the studio, I'm joined by my colleague Li Jianhua, who had traveled to Africa, and my, my colleague from Nairobi office, Lindy Mnangana. Good evening to both Good of you. Good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. I've picked up a few key points from Chinese foreign minister's speech this afternoon, and I'd like to discuss with you what do they mean for not just forum, but also for the future of China and Africa's cooperation. I'd like to start with the first one, and I quote a uh, uh, Chinese foreign minister. He said that for the past three years, African countries had always been the first stop of his international journeys of diplomacy. So what is this cause of the, the surge of significance on Africa, mm. on China's uh, diplomatic agenda? I think it's important to remember that uh, when President Xi first came into power in 2013, um, his maiden overseas tour was a trip to Africa, where he visited Tanzania, the Republic of Congo, and South Africa. Um, so I think that already, back in 2013, had set the tone for the significance that China would place mm -hmm. uh, on their foreign policy uh, with regards to Africa. So Wang, Yi is, Wang Yi's actions of visiting um, Africa um, at the beginning of every year is a continuation of that. But it's important to look at what these past three years have been. Of course, three years ago was the last forum uh, for a, a summit, and that was held in Johannesburg in 2015. There, of course, a lot of pledges were made, a lot of partnerships were strengthened. And mm -hmm. I think in these three years, Part of the reason of this continued, uh, continuing visits and, and strengthening of relations is in a sense to, to, to do good on those promises, to live up to the expectations that were created at the pre previous VOCAC summit three years ago. Of course, there's other reasons why um, around resources. Um, that's probably one of the main reasons that China seeks to strengthen its relationship with Africa. But certainly, I do think that it all begins with the President Xi Jinping mm -hmm. and his first visit in 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jianhua, I yes. love your little gifts on that. On the table, are there evidence that you actually been in Africa? <laughs> That's where I have to prove that I have been there, right? And so I um, have some items on the table. Uh, tell us first, uh, in very brief, a uh, few lines. So what are they? Yeah, very briefly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not the African expert here, but I've definitely brought over something. And this one is a uh, fridge magnet, right? And this one is a gorilla. So ah. a gorilla actually is the uh, national symbol in Uganda. It's like very a panda, much like in, a panda China. in China. Uh -huh. Okay, and this is a bowl. Everything is handmade. You see the uh, um, zebra, and everything is a little bit crude, probably. If you look the uh, look at this way or that way, right? Mm -hmm. But everything is handmade and very beautiful. And then I also brought over the big five, the big five. And then you just said big five is kind of the South African term, right? Well, I, I consider it a South African term as mm -hmm. a South African, but of course, I mean, mm -hmm. these animals are found in many parts of Africa, so maybe it is mm -hmm. a continental term, That's the, right. the big five. Are, uh -huh. they, are they gifts to you, actually, you bought them? Yeah, we bought them, actually, mm -hmm. and some, some of them, actually, are gifts. And these two are from Zambia, and this mm -hmm. one, it looks very much like a dagger. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's very African, idea. very beautiful. And they allow you to take it on airplane? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't <laughs> think this could yeah, really cause that much so. damage. So. Yeah, that's so great. From, from your experience then, mm -hmm. on all the lovely memories, that's I'm great. sure. And can you, can, you feel, can you feel this increase of the significance of our Africa for China? I think so. Uh, let me give you something different from the other way. Like I went to six African countries and then you definitely could see China everywhere in the form of um, in the form of cooperation like mm -hmm. we have different projects i went to uganda for the first stop and we had the asimba power project mm -hmm. which could um, China, lower the price of pri price of electricity uh, they were chinese investment there. yeah chinese investment and also like in namibia we can also see everywhere you can see some chinese elements right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh, lindy just now talk about the resources and everything and that is part of the reason why we do see so mm -hmm. much cooperation between mm -hmm. China and African countries, and also the pledges, and then you mentioned. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm wondering, like, like the 
the pledges we talked about just now. Mm -hmm. Like, how is it going on right now in Africa from mm -hmm. your perspective? Well, I mean, it was from the previous FOCAC. Um, mm -hmm. It was a pledge of 60 billion US dollars from China to Africa. Uh, just keep in mind, by the way, that the very first FOCAC summit back in 2006 ended with a pledge of about five billion dollars. So look at just how much that uh, pledge has grown and uh -huh. what that says about the level of interest from China to Africa, the uh -huh. level of investment, and of course, the level of commitment uh, to making this relationship really strong. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, it wasn't, it's not the kind of money that would be spent in one go, obviously. There's like a 10 year plan supporting uh, that pledge. And a lot of that stuff is still in action. I know some countries like Zimbabwe, for instance, mm -hmm. um, they've benefited greatly from that particular pledge with airports. And of course, I think it's a, uh, it's Victoria an, Falls Airport. Yes, exactly. I know, yeah, I went to the airport, yes. Victoria Falls Airport. They could um, bring tons of um, tourists from different parts Definitely. of the world there because we expanded the airport and now like the large airport could mm. fit in. Mm. But it was mm. impossible before. So if you want to go there, you have to transit from South Africa or from Ethiopia, right? Mm -hmm. But now you can fly mainly. there directly. Yeah, I feel like I've been left out from this conversation <laughs> because you two have some shared experience that I yes. have, <laughs> not, have no knowledge of. No, 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 it's okay. Add but Africa on your bucket that is, list. That, isn't actually, it? that is what I am counting on here because my mm -hmm. next question is can, you, can any of you or each of you tell me mm -hmm. uh, what is the local people's reception of? the increase of the Chinese uh, present there. Because if the significance for China That's as African right. is, is increasing, mm -hmm. I would assume that the uh, China's, Chinese investment or any form of a Chinese presence there is also mm. increasing. Mm -hmm. How is local people's reaction to that, to that change? Yeah. I mean, I think from, from, um, an, from an investment perspective, what people do appreciate and acknowledge as really good mm -hmm. uh, are the projects like the airports, like the roads and the rails, the harbors. Mm -hmm. um, those things bring tangible benefits to people just to be able to connect from one part of a country to another in ways that were never possible before. What it does for the economy, just because it, it, it allows the movement of people and goods to happen in ways that were impossible before. That is definitely, definitely seen as a very, very good thing. Mm. But in some cases, there is still a little bit of, what's the word, like reservation, or maybe just, I mean, sometimes some people don't really- Misunderstanding? Really under, misunderstanding, yeah, that's probably mm -hmm. the best way to put it. Um, there's obviously been, with the money, I suppose, you know, as, as the trade has increased and all these financial inflows have increased, there's obviously been an increase of the number of Chinese people in African mm -hmm. cities. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's been met with a bit of misunderstanding and just a little bit of people feeling unsure mm -hmm. of what China's doing here. Is China taking over? What is, you know, you, you see a lot more Chinese businesses opening up, some of them catering mm -hmm. exclusively for Chinese customers, where mm -hmm. the signage outside will be written, yes. you know, only in Chinese and mm -hmm. things like that. So, and, you know, you've been with the Chinese companies there in Africa. Yes. Have you seen that Chinese companies and investors, ordinary businessmen, are they addressing this concern? I totally agree. Um, let me go with the first question. It's mm -hmm. like, um, we do see, like, especially China is investing very heavily in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's just like the first step if you mm -hmm. want to move on to the next level. And then I do see that some local people actually are not really happy with like what we're doing there. You know, in everywhere, everywhere in the world, see, Pro and cons, mm. of course. And then some people think, and then you talk about uh, some of the companies, the Chinese companies working there, and then so it's some kind of people to people exchanges. Mm -hmm. And then they do have a lot of misunderstandings, that we have to admit. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason is because mostly, like the Chinese companies, they work there, they just want to get the uh, project done and then would come back to China. Mm. And then mostly, I think that is something most people have overlooked, that is the language barrier. Mm -hmm. and most Chinese people actually they speak broken English. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. And then, so their way of dealing with, or their attitudes will seem a little bit so there's something missing yeah. mm -hmm. uh, during communication. Yeah, during the communication, as mm -hmm. the African, I talked to some of the uh, African employees working there, and then sometimes they say, yeah, you know what, we don't feel really comfortable when mm. talking to, when communicating with our Chinese mm -hmm. colleagues there because their way of seeing things. But the thing is, they don't know. Yes. The Chinese bosses don't know that they this don't is how know that the workers is, feel. You know, when it comes to a different language and then you don't know how to um, put it in a nice way and then you just want to make the communication as effective as possible mm -hmm. and then so that would make the culture of the company a little bit, you know, watered down. Are those companies, are, are those companies aware of this, this problem? Mostly they don't. That is why I say it's like they just want to get the uh, projects done and then, and that's it. But the thing is, 
we have been promoting people to people exchanges, especially last year in two thousand. Not sorry, not last year in the previous four caucus in two thousand fifteen, mm. and we have been promoting that mm. people to people exchanges. We need to people. We need people to make sure. We need to make sure that everyone could understand each other on the same page. Mm -hmm. Okay, but language barrier is definitely a big problem mm -hmm. over there. How many languages in Africa? Tons. I mean, that's a lot. It's 54 countries. So yeah, I mean, 54 countries. They all have their I local mean, just languages. Just in Kenya right? alone, there's about I think it's 47 tribes, if yes. I'm not mistaken. So yeah. I mean, that's just one country. Mm -hmm. There's hundreds of languages. But uh, amazingly, you know, over all those uh, barriers and uh, and uh, hurdles, actually. The cooperation, the momentum for cooperation, as per China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi, actually is uh, increasing between China and Africa cooperation. He said so in this afternoon's uh, meeting, and uh, he said that this development and momentum actually had been achieved despite the global economic uncertainty. So, despite all those difficulties, local difficulties, I mean, people cannot understand each other. The momentum is um, still strong. How can that be achieved? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the momentum is being driven certainly from a political level, and that political level isn't uh, obliv it's, it's not, di it's not uh, divorced from what it is that people essentially and fundamentally want, irrespective of who it necessarily comes from. But certainly the fact that that assistance, that development assistance, financial development assistance is coming from China, is not a bad thing. It's not a reason to reject China at all. Um, I mean, I think that what Africans are prioritizing is their own development agenda, um, especially, say, since 2013. That was when the African Union drafted the Agenda 2063 document, um, and it was sort of subtitled what Africa, what Africa wants, or the Africa we want, sorry. And I think that document really states exactly how Africans want this continent of ours to look like in the future. Mm -hmm. And so it's there for anyone to see. So China picks up that document and says, well, we can help with this and with this and with this. There's no reason not to join forces, cooperate and work together if we, you know, both going to benefit from, from that relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, based on your experience there, do you see, I mean, my question to you is, mm -hmm. do you think in Africa should join the global manufacturing train as China did? 20 or 30 years before. I think so. And then you said, how can China, Africa avoid the fate of being yes, the new because boat factory? It's like in the, there's uh -huh. always some negative uh, uh, feelings associated with the idea of you know, the, the world of factory. But do you think that is a bad term? I don't think world factory is a bad term from mm. my perspective. Mm. If you want to engage in the global production chain, and mm -hmm. then you should get yourself involved. So that and is you a starting should be point, part of it. So that's a starting point. So like what China did a couple of years ago, like decades ago. And then if you are involved and more and more, you're going to have more business. And then we talk about the development, uh, developmental momentum between China and Africa cooperation, actually. According to the figure released by the Chinese Commerce Ministry, the China's investment in Africa is slightly going down a little bit. Mm -hmm. In 2013, it used to be 4.3 billion US dollars, and then it came down to 4.1 billion US dollars. And then mm -hmm. we'll see what is going on for this year if we're going to have more deals inked in this Foucault mm -hmm. summit. Mm. And another mm. aspect that I'm interested in is uh, about uh, security. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Wang Yi said that China has been devoted to Africa's peace projects, and uh, in that project, in, because it's not just one project, because it's uh, so many countries in Africa. And uh, but overall, uh, in general, what kind of role China is playing in this progress of uh, helping Africa to secure a more peaceful mm. future? I mean, I think certainly peace and security are fundamental to any plan or agenda for Africa to develop. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost as though we're, we're always taking one step forward and two steps back for every mm -hmm. conflict, for every coup, for every you know, political uh, you know, situation that happens that leaves people homeless or you know, creates more refugees. Or, you know. So for Africa to develop, we definitely need to address peace and security. And to have partners like China, we've seen certainly in the past number of years, that more and more Chinese peacekeepers have actually been joining, mm -hmm. uh, working with African forces West and Africa. even, yeah, especially in West Africa. Africa. Um, working with, with African forces and even international forces, the UN peacekeeper forces, you know, uh, mm -hmm. AMISOM and the like. But, and I think it's really making a difference. I mean, I think a colleague of mine, a number of colleagues of mine have reported on this and we've seen that there's a, there's a great deal of dedication from Chinese peacekeepers that have come to Africa. 
um, mm -hmm. to assist in this regard. And from another perspective, of course, China uh, has established that uh, army base in Djibouti. That's mm -hmm. a very significant move for China to have done so. We know, of course, that the U.S. already had a, an army base there. But the fact that China, too, has established one, I think that's a really clear sign of how serious they're taking peace and security on the continent. Mm. Do they people, do local people feel safer now? Um, I think that really depends. Like Africa is a big continent comprised of more than 50 countries. And mm -hmm. I went to Northeast Africa and uh, South Africa in the southern part of Africa. So in different countries, you feel different things, right? Mm -hmm. if, uh, but the sixth country I went to, Uganda, Malawi, uh, Zimbabwe, Namibia, to South Africa, they are all quite safe, actually. Um, and then we talk about UN's key, uh, peacekeeping fund and everything. Actually, I interviewed the uh, president of Uganda, and then he actually was not really happy with the UN's work. And he said that he would be glad to work with China directly because of the uh, efficiency. I think China is doing a lot when it comes to peacekeeping in Africa. And then you also talk about uh, China's army based mm. in Djibouti and also in America, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot is going on. So progress is made. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the work is but in they progress. But the local people, they prefer to, it to be quicker because security mm -hmm. and the peace issue kind of the fundamental thing that if you cannot tackle yeah. security issue, then yes. investment and business so this are all, completely out of the question. Yeah. yeah, I think that is part of the reason why China would like to help Africa with the peacekeeping mission, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, we need to make sure that it is safe and then for mm -hmm. the sake of Africans, also mm -hmm. for the sake of China's business over there. Right? True, exactly. I mean, right. essentially, China is leaving assets there, isn't it? You know, yeah. from ports and harbors, or whatever. And in order to protect their own assets, they, uh -huh. they, they would have to be, yeah. they would have to have a vested interest in peace and security That's on right. the continent. Yeah, we're talking about cooperation areas. all the time. It's yeah. not very much like China is doing everything for the sake of Africa and then it is business and then it, is, it business. is cooperation yeah. but cooperation is based on business mm. right uh -huh. and the last point I like to discuss with you too is about this uh, statement also made by the Chinese foreign minister he said that China and Africa are expanding fields that they can learn from each other I think over the past few years and uh, we've already gotten used to the idea that Africa sending talents, people, talented people to China to learn things like technology and uh, accumulating managerial skills and experience. But uh, it seems to me, and uh, I'd like to say this on behalf of my viewers, so what are the fields that China are learning actually from Africa? I'd like to start this from mm -hmm. you because uh, you've mm -hmm. been there and you are from China. And uh, what is your observation? I think a lot, if you go to different parts of Africa, and then you definitely could see different things, also learn from different people. Uh, let me give one example. I went to Namibia, and then we lived in um, like the uh, makeshift tents, something like that. And then when we came over, and the people working there would take notes, would record all of our stuff, like uh, computers we brought in and everything. They need to make sure everything is um, in order. And then so we were let's say when you drive and then you have to make sure you buckle up, you mm -hmm. buckle up. and in China sometimes, and so say, you know, it is fine, <laughs> you know, probably people Our will see that. Our traffic awareness is yeah, strong traffic enough. Yeah, traffic awareness is not really strong enough, but if you go to Namibia and also some other countries in Africa, they have a very, very strong sense of security and also everything should go in process order and then you need to report to whom and everything should be um, everything should be controlled and I think I think that is something China should learn from Africa one of the things mm -hmm. one of the many things mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. any, I don't know, in, from, any insight for me what comes to mind I think and it's actually probably because you mentioned the big five earlier mm -hmm. but I definitely think that conservation is an area in That's which right. yeah China could learn a lot from Africa. And in fact, I think China has taken on some major lessons on board. Mm -hmm. I mean, China banned the sale of ivory, ivory. in this country. Yes. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that conservationists in Africa were calling for for a long time in order to mm -hmm. save you know, the country's elephant and mm -hmm. rhino from poachers. It was yes. that, yes, we can send police after these poachers or we mm -hmm. can put security. But actually, if you kill off the demand at the source, mm -hmm. you will drastically drop yeah. the demand for, po uh, for, for rhino horn or, and therefore drop uh, poaching. And I think that lesson was learned and that was passed mm -hmm. on to China and China took it on and changed fundamental policy, which I think, you know, that, that was a, a lesson learned from Africa. Yeah, I totally agree. When mm -hmm. I was in Zimbabwe, you can see elephants in the streets or antelopes. 
alive, right? Jumping around, <laughs> alive, of course. In the park. In, 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 in the park. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, but... Wouldn't it cause a traffic problem? No, but, traffic but problem, not like in the no. normal streets, like inside a nature reserve. Inside the nature reserve, we can okay, see uh, Pamba. Uh, yeah, the warthog. It's a natural <laughs> park instead of... Nat yes. like yeah, natural in park. Like in the... Uh, no, like in the streets. Um, that is around the Victoria Falls. Okay. It's a very small town, and so you can see elephants, antelopes, and and a have lot you, of other. Have you ever and you, yeah. uh, uh, going anywhere near an elephant? Elephant, so kind of walking. Have, yeah, you uh, can passing you passing by. That's fine. You can. <laughs> and then this, uh, yeah, something, something, yeah, something but like what, that happens again. We take uh, Africa. That, that was a, yeah. that was a, for me. It's an alien feeling. Like what was it? It is for alien how feeling. Does, how did it feel like in a, with an with elephant passing by? I just want to say, okay, uh -huh. maybe because I'm a city girl. This is not a common thing. This is like a stereotype this is that not there's a thing. Not animals just all. walking around on the streets, yeah. like in between <laughs> shopping malls or whatever. It's not, not shopping at malls. All. Like Victoria, this is Victoria obviously Fall, like yes. even Victoria uh -huh. Falls is in like in a protected and you know sort of environmental area to uh -huh. some degree. So it's not. This is not a normal thing. You don't just have uh -huh. animals cruising the streets. I thought it was a normal thing. thing. I said, like, so yeah. maybe just put that, that animal there. conservation is so good in Zimbabwe. You can see elephants in the streets. Yeah, Victoria Falls is a very small town. As then I walk from the city center to my hotel, mm. and then I could see some antelopes and elephants. Mm. And then is once again we took Africa as a whole country again, like in different parts of Africa, right? In some countries, like poaching, is it poaching? Is it legal? Mm -hmm. Hunting. Yeah, like hunting. You can hunt, not poaching is not sport legal. Hunting. At all, but sport le hunting yeah, can sport be legal hunting in is some still legal. Countries, yeah, in yeah. some spaces. It's often quite well controlled, and mm -hmm. often those are private parks. So, so, for instance, national parks don't generally allow poaching mm -hmm. or hunting, sorry. But somebody might start their own little private park and they might buy certain animals yeah, and they then buy animals bring and shoot tourists them. are allowed, you know, tourists can pay to come and shoot them. I guess yeah. there's, no, not very there's no issue that you can solve overnight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Rome yeah, mm -hmm. isn't good today. Yeah, and there's a sure. custom of this uh, newly set show, I like at the end of it, ask, asking, um, asking mm -hmm. the, your agenda for tomorrow because tomorrow is the big day. The event finally mm -hmm. come. And, uh, Indy, what is your plan for tomorrow's coverage for CGTN's viewers and audiences? Well, as you said, tomorrow is a big day. It all begins quite early. Well, not that mm -hmm. early. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning, local time. Yes. Um, that will be when all the leaders arrive and President Xi Jinping will officially open the 2018 FOCAC Summit. Um, oh, I think that's in the afternoon, isn't it? In the afternoon. In the afternoon. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. In the afternoon. morning. It's a, it's a for the morning meeting. is yeah. the, uh, the, high, the so business the forum. Uh, let's say this. Uh, well, let me, sorry, let me keep it as simple for you. What is, the, uh, what is the focus of your tomorrow's coverage? Will be uh, economy, Belt and Road Initiative, Probably. cooperation, security, which is it? Probably Belt and Road Initiative. It's come up a lot lately, but I'm curious to see how it's going to link to mm -hmm. Africa's Agenda 2063. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I'm And the Jianghua, your plan? Yeah, tomorrow a lot is going on, and I'm going to talk. Um, I'm going to interview four ministers. <laughs> four ministers? <laughs> yeah, four ministers. From four countries, presumably? From what countries? Are four different countries. Okay. And then I'm going to talk about energy energy cooperation between mm. China and African countries. Mm -hmm. So it is something really big because energy is always a big topic. Mm -hmm. yes. I'd like you to leave a clip hunger there. I, I don't want to disclose <laughs> all those uh, secret plans of yours. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for plans. the insight. Thank you thank for you. Uh, thank your you very time. Much. Thank you. And uh, yes, that's our uh, discussion today based on Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi's speech this afternoon in the minister's meeting between China and African countries. And tomorrow, now we're in the countdown to tomorrow's big meeting, the Forum on China and Africa Cooperation. And I'm excited because tomorrow our show will continue and I, can, I will invite Lini to join me as well. And uh, also we will have another CGTN reporter who had been in Africa for almost a month to share with us his or her experience. And uh, her, I, the identity of the reporter, I like to keep a secret <laughs> for now. And uh, if you have any uh, interested topics or questions you like to leave to us, and the reporters can definitely bring those questions because we have Jim Hart here. Tomorrow he will interview four ministers from uh, different African countries. He can definitely bring your questions to the ministers. And uh, the topic would be uh, the, to the topic is energy, right? Energy cooperation. Yeah, energy is huge. So feel free to leave your comments and uh, questions on CGTN's. Uh, social platforms, uh, including Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, microblog, as well as uh, application. And uh, we, I will pick that questions and I will send it to Jianhua and uh, Lindy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'm Ding Yang from Beijing. I'll see you tomorrow. Good evening. Good night.